Peggy Tajian, editor for Only Murders in the Building. You just got an Emmy nomination for your work on season two. Congratulations. Uh, how did you find out and what does the nomination mean to you? Um, actually, it's, I was doing camp drop off for my kids and it was um, two of my co-editors from season two and three that texted me right away to say congratulations. So that was awesome because I knew I was going to come home and check the nominations, mm -hmm. um, but it was cool to kind of find out when I was out and about. Um, it means so much. This is, I've been nominated before, but this is the first time I've been nominated for scripted and it's the first time I've been nominated on my own. So it feels extra special. Yeah. Sure. A show that I love, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you also joined in season two. So what, what is that process like too, of joining an, ex an existing project like that, that has an established tone and style? It, uh, intimidating <laughs> for sure. Cause I, I, so when I first heard about the show, the season one wasn't even out yet and they were already hiring for season two and um, there was just a teaser trailer out. And so I, you know, I grew up watching Steve, Steve Martin and Martin Short. I was very on board with this project, but as I started working, episodes would drop. So we were all in post kind of as fans watching the show air and trying not to know who the killer was so that we could, you know, work on the next season. Um, and I think all of them aired before our season started, but right away we saw that it was a hit. And um, I think it was intimidating to step into like such great editor's shoes, but I think we did a good job. We brought our own flavor to season two, but also maintained the, tone that they set in season one which you know is um it's fast and it's you know joke 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 like it's it's a fast pace but it was really it was really fun to take on that challenge and i think we i think we did it really well yeah for sure i mean what what, what kind of discussions or did you have with uh john hoffman the showrunner and your fellow editors about season two and maybe just even how to like evolve the style for that this mystery and you know bunny's murder yeah, so I think very early on we realized that the score for season one was going to, like the score between season one and season two was going to have to shift because season one was, you know, really fast and and like it was a lot more mystery. And then in season two, we were getting into the personal stories. So there was a lot more emotional connections to be made and we needed a lot more um, just kind of quieter music, not not always just driving a scene forward, but also just like living in those quiet moments. And so we worked a lot with the composer Siddhartha Kosla, um, which was really fun to see how he could um, kind of elevate the score from season one into something that still felt the you know in the same tone as season one, but kind of was making more emotional connections with the character. Yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit more like melancholy. Yeah, I mean, especially the episode that I was nominated for is all about Bunny Folger and and there's a lot of sadness in it. And so, you know, finding the bunny theme that kind of was a play on the Mabel theme from season one, those things were really fun to figure out together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your episode, uh, your nominated episode, The Last Day of Bunny Folger, it's a fan favorite for sure. And you pack so much information into I think it's like 27 minutes of the episode but we like, learn so much about Bunny and her whole life story and, and get more information about the night of her murder um and you really feel like the loneliness like she felt you know um and then there's obviously like expository stuff with the case so how do you approach that like knowing you know you have to uh, include all this stuff within 30 minutes yeah, it's a, it's tough. I mean, we're fortunate. Our scripts are great. Our cast is great, you know, so it's really just about fine tuning things. It's not, we're not making things up in post. We're really just fine tuning. Um, I was intimidated when I read that script because also there's not a lot of scenes with the trio in that episode. And I knew it was gonna, as soon as the daily started coming in, I knew it was gonna be a bit of a slower pace. And it was my first episode for the show. I hadn't cut anything on Only Murders yet. And so I remember presenting it to the producers and being like, are they gonna hate it? Cause it doesn't exactly feel like the rest of Only Murders. Um, but I think that, you know, figuring out a way to humanize such an unlikable character from season one was just kind of genius on their part in the script. And it was so fun to try to 
to, to figure out how to make people feel like an emotional connection with, with Bun Bun, <laughs> with Bunny. And so, yeah, I, I mean, it was, it's, it's not hard to keep the thread of the mystery alive because that's sort of what everybody's tuning in for, but to also make them interested in the human connections, I think is, is like where um, Only Murders is just like this really fun show because you, you get to do both, you know? Mm -hmm. I think the viewers like that too. Yeah. Yeah. And like for her specifically, it was like, it was a supporting character you already knew from season one. And then it's like, we actually, now we get to learn more about her and yeah. it's, it's like the victim's story. Yeah. So and she gets to be humanized, but she also stays this like sassy, snarky woman, right? She doesn't, that doesn't change, but you get to see like everything behind it too, which I thought was sweet. Mm hmm yeah. Well, like in, I mean, basically every episode of, of the show mm -hmm. leading into the, the finale, uh, they, you know, it features scenes that the viewer uh, probably has already seen, um, you know, like in this one, Bunny's murder, but then you show it from like a different angle, a different perspective. So we mm -hmm. see like the night of her murder, exactly what happened when she, you know, delivered wine to the three of them and they didn't invite her in. So how do you like go about editing like that scene? Obviously there's new scenes too, but to make it interesting enough for the viewer when they are seeing scenes they've already seen before you know yeah I think um so that last that like ending where we're kind of we know that this is the night she gets killed because she's wearing the hoodie and you see the trio up on the roof and that was me recycling footage from season one we didn't reshoot that mm -hmm. it it wasn't I don't remember I don't think it was scripted exactly like that but it was um somewhere in post we were thinking that just staying with Bunny almost wasn't dramatic enough. And that if people, we needed people to remember that this was the same night as this big celebration was going on up in the roof. So then we started intercutting from season one. And I think that's really when it started to hit like more, um, I mean, it feels like an action sequence, but like there's not that much happening. You know, she's sitting and watching TV in her apartment and feeding her but bird. But you know she's getting murdered. <laughs> like that's it. Yeah. 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 But I I I think that's sort of and and uh again, the music in that scene, Sid, we we had I think at some point we had a song in there and we kept being like, it's not quite right, it's not quite right. And then um Sid and I talked and he said, Well, let me take a stab at it. And he came up with the most insane, beautiful score for that last like five minutes of the episode. It's a really long cue and it's beautiful and it makes the whole thing just come together. Like from them getting into the elevator to go up to the roof, to us seeing like someone step off the elevator knowing that like Bunny's killer is arriving. Like, I don't know, it just really helped the tension of the moment. Yeah, and then it also, like, you as the viewer, it's like, oh, they, they could have, quote, unquote, saved her had they just invited her in, you know? It's... <laughs> well, one thing um, about this episode, too, that I thought was interesting is we get a lot of POV from um, Mrs. Gambolini's perspective, <laughs> like, from the cage. And the final shot is not from her, but you you see her perched on the a chair, I think, in the yeah. show. Yeah. Um, so was that like something written in the script, or was that something that came up like in the edit? No, that was um, the director Jude uh, Wang. She she yeah, that was her. She just she had this idea to show the fight because the the fight was scripted that you kind of see it maybe blurry or dark, you know. Um, and she had this idea that what if we do this wide shot where the, the bird is in and we see the shadows and of the fighting and so no that was beautiful when that footage came in i was like this is gonna be an awesome end to the episode yeah, it, it's like funny and also sad and you know like it's an action scene like you said too so yeah. um i mean like one thing you also have to do is kind of like draw attention to certain elements like clues like we see the the painting in bunny's bedroom in the beginning in the flashback so uh, how, how much do you want to like, you know, draw attention to certain things? Like, obviously you want the viewer to see that, but you don't want to make it so obvious, right? Cause it's just kind of very subtle, the movement, like including yeah. that in it. Yeah, I think that's sort of, uh, it was, you know, a discussion during like production meetings early on of like, to obviously Bunny's alive. So we know it's a flashback, but if she was alive, her house would look a little different. That painting would still be on her wall in her bedroom. and. You know, so um, that's really the the art department really made sure that those little hints were there. Because also, if you um, 
I don't know. There's some scene where like um, you see the birdcage before you meet Mrs. Gambolini. So you kind of like know a bird exists, you know, like they they're very good at making sure that um, that those elements are always in place. Um, we our job is to make sure that when they're in the scene that we're showing it as editors, you know, so um, there's a there's a lot we do uh, little, little Easter eggs for people. Um, in season two, one of the fun things we did was after the season was almost finished, we went back and added um, some yodeling. Every time you're in the courtyard, you hear a little like yodeling off in the distance. And that's just uh, Howard practicing his yodel so that when by the time episode eight comes around, you've, you've almost gotten used to hearing it mm -hmm. subconsciously, you know, but we... It's, it's like osmosis. <laughs> yeah, it's like just building a world. Like, you know, there's a casual text from... Um, uh, Steve Martin char Steve Martin's character to his girlfriend that's in jail and there's like a subtle text like oh all you can hear is I think it's like some kid practicing the violin and Howard yodeling and so it you know like little things like that just to make it feel like this connected space that they're all living in to build the world mm -hmm. and that's really a testament to John Hoffman he loves little things like that so when he saw the cut and was like oh I see the painting in the background let's linger on that shot just like a hair more so people catch it and they know that this used to exist above her bed, you know? Right, yeah. I mean, the show is very excellent at uh, including sight gags every now and then. Like, uh, I mean, like one in this one is when Bunny is practicing her her speech, her, re her retirement speech, and then she's like, pause for laughs. And then you zoom in on her note card and it actually says, pause yeah. for laughs. So what was that something you just was like, like also like in the script or something you just you saw in the footage? It's like, we should include that because that'll be funny. Yeah, no, that was not in the script. I mean, the I think the pause for laugh was in the script, but like those cards at some point during production um, I mean, and, and, the <laughs> and the art department were like, oh, wait, we should write it in the card and we should have a card to cut to. Um, I do think one of the things I loved about that episode, especially being my first, is um, I had a lot of footage to play with. Uh, Jude was great at getting all those like really pretty insert shots that feel like they're part of the scene, like those no cards, like the close ups of the bird who was, you know, a bird on, on set is not the easiest thing to manage. And I think it, it worked out, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, how much did you know uh, about the case? Like, did you know who the, the killer was or was it like an episode by episode thing? So early on for the tone meeting of this episode, they had, they were talking about the feet coming off the elevator and who were we gonna have coming off the elevator? And they were like, well, we should just have Poppy stunt double. So even though I hadn't read all the scripts, I was like, oh, dude, it's Poppy, you know? And then, um, but it was cool because I didn't know how we were going to get there. And the right. whole season I was watching, working on these episodes being like, but how is it Poppy? And why is it Poppy? And so then as the scripts come out and I would read them and kind of get closer to, and I don't think it's truly to like episodes eight or nine where you're in your head, you're like, it might be Poppy, you know? Mm -hmm. So. And then even ten, in a, even in the finale, there's yeah, like it still has to like how how does it come together? That that's why like I don't mind like finding out like a, a spoiler like the actual thing because I want to know how to, they got there, you know. So well, because in a by when I was cutting episode three, I was like, how Poppy? I had to look up like who is Poppy on Only Murders, right? Because I didn't remember the name of the character from season one. And so that was cool to be like, okay, how did this person end up being the killer of Bunny? And why does she want the painting? And why did she hate Bunny, you know? Well, so, then you, you also edited um, nine, right? Yeah. So yeah. did you piece anything together by then? <laughs> I pieced it. So in episode six, I, uh, I read the script and then I was in a meeting with the director and John Hoffman, our showrunner. And she said, is there anything I need to know? Oh, because so episode six is the one that Poppy narrates the beginning right, where she's yeah. in the broadcast room. And she goes, is there anything I need to know that's important for later? And he goes, yeah. So Poppy's the killer, but Poppy <laughs> is also Becky. I can't even remember the last name right now, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
season one. And so he was, and so then it was like putting those posters of like, um, where is Becky and all, everything is okay or everything is not okay in Oklahoma, like putting those posters up behind Poppy in um, Cindy Canning's office, those were intentional. Oh. So, so they were there in, in six, but then you see them again in nine and this time she's actually opening shot of six, she's sitting in front of those two signs. So, you know, there's like a huge spoiler right there, but it's just an Easter egg, you know, and that's, that's John and the, and the um, art department just figuring out, okay, this is kind of a cute nod later when people rewatch the season. That but it also like, makes sense like narratively because she's working for Cinda and like that was her podcast, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny. Um, I mean, well, so what what would you say is like the key to editing a murder mystery like this? Because you, you need to, you know, include, you know, suspense, intrigue, and also information. And like in this particular episode, just information about a character we don't know that well. But then by the end, we're so invested in her and she's dead. Yeah. I think the thing that I had to keep remembering um in each episode was to make sure that the murder mystery was front and center. If you really think about um, the last day of Bunny, Bunny Folder, that episode doesn't really move the story forward, except that it gives you a sense of like, well, now we want to find Bunny's killer because we love Bunny and we want to avenge her death, you know? So I, I think that it was important to make sure that those scenes where they are talking about the case and like, you know, there there's one scene where they're looking at the pictures of um, the doorman and the uh, the woman who becomes the head of the board. You know, after Bunny, like they're like to make sure that those scenes really land and are giving you the exact right information that you need. Sometimes they're like they're there's too much dialogue and you are, you worry that people are getting a little lost in the information dump as we call it. Um, so it's like about paring back and making sure that those moments really la land. And then overall for the whole season, it's about talking to the rest of the team and talking to the showrunner and making sure we're not tipping our hand too early, but we're also giving a little bit away so that people can start to, to unravel the mystery themselves so that they don't feel like they're not, getting any of the mystery aspects of it. Um, so it's just like, a, it's just a balance and you just have to figure it out with, you know, the other edit teams, you kind of talk about like, okay, well, I'll show the poster in my episode. It's okay if you don't show it in yours or, you know, things like that. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, you uh, return for season three. Um, so what, what can you tease about season three and uh, Paul Rudd's murderer? <laughs> It's bigger and better than ever. It is a huge season. I think they um, adding we added Paul Rudd and Meryl Streep to the cast, and they bring so much. And them, like the trio, still exists, but them with the trio is also magic. We also Jesse Williams joined our cast, and um, Ashley Park. We have some really really cool people popping in. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say anybody else, but <laughs> well, uh, I mean, like this time, you know, it's they're they're working on a musical, a play, Oliver's play. So, what is that like editing a, a production within a show? Yeah, so a lot of it is flashing back to the show that they were putting on with um, Paul Rudd's character that he was the lead, and that's where he dies at the end of um, season two. He dies on opening night, so a lot of it is sort of recreating or, you know, flash, like, we love a flashback. It's flashing back to moments where they're prepping for that show. Oh, well, he's still or, alive, just like Bunny. <laughs> yeah, he's around, don't worry. Paul Rudd's, in, Paul Rudd's in season three, and he's incredible. He's so fun to watch. Um, and, yeah, and he gets, you know, he, he gets plenty of screen time. So does Meryl. They, they're great. It's honestly, it was so fun. It's a really, really, really fun season. Uh, well, uh, that premieres very soon. Um, Peggy, uh, congratulations again on the nomination. And uh, it was great speaking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's so nice to talk to you.